<laughs> I just like talking. Um, if I get a huge round of applause, Mr. Paul McGillian. That's great. Hello, you cheeky bug ups. How's everybody doing today? Good. Can you hear me in the back? Yeah? Okay. Great. Oh, it's just perfect to bed. <laughs> this is great. Uh, listen, I want to thank you on behalf of myself, you know, Jason Momoa, uh, Joe Flanagan. We're really, really happy to be here. It's been a, a great weekend so far. Everybody is super nice. I had a great dinner last night with some of the fans, and uh, it was awesome. And uh, it was good to meet, meet people a little closer up and stuff. And uh, I really appreciate you having me back here. It's my third time in Australia. Never been to Melbourne before. It's a beautiful city. And uh, I just love it. So thank you very much for having me. And you guys were so great to us over the five years of the show. And without you, we wouldn't have a show. So I hope you know that. And I sincerely mean that. That's why, that's why we come to these things, to meet a lot of the fans and so many great people and great costumes that we see. I'm trying to get Jason Momoa to go in the ring and fight Joe Flanagan later on. Yeah, he would probably kill him, but uh, it would be fun to see, wouldn't it? Yeah, all right, Let's see if I can work that out. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's such a nice thing to do the show. People always ask, you know, how did it work out for you? I said, well, it's great because, you know, the character started off initially as a reoccurring character on the show. We didn't know what was gonna happen. And then after like three or four episodes, I got a call from Martin Wood saying, listen, they'd like to talk to you up in the office about an episode number seven, a heavy Carson Beckett episode. And I started thinking, well, this is great. Um, and that turned out to be poisoning the well. And then after that episode, uh, the character was in like 17 or 18 of the first 20. And then because of the fan base, he became a regular until they killed him off. But then, when this little baby came out right here, I have on. Uh, Steve Carson Beckett, they brought him back again. And again, that's because of you guys, so thank you for that. I don't know if anybody right here is personally responsible, but thank you anyway. They all are, yes, I know. It's been great. But uh, yeah, no, it's been, a, it's been a great ride for me working on the show. Uh, we're not sure if there's gonna be a movie or not. Uh, I know there's a script written for the movie. Um, but as far as we know, uh, we haven't got a date on that yet, but uh, I know it is written. I, I think it's in the plans, uh, but I don't know when uh, that would happen. But uh, you know, certainly I do, I do hope it happens for the fans. It'd be great to happen. And obviously you can see all the castmates again and stuff. So it was really cool to be part of that. Um, I guess the best way is for me to start taking questions. Is that how we do it here? No one tells me anything. <laughs> yes, I'll start taking questions. And if you can't hear, I'll repeat the questions so we can hear, yes. Oh, you have a mic, you're gonna go around with mics? Awesome. The, the question was, is there a script written already? Um, and where does it start if it goes? And I do believe, don't quote me on this, but I know that Paul uh, Mully and Joe Malazzi wrote the script. I believe the script takes place from the last uh, scene of the uh, series. That's my understanding. I haven't read the script, I'm not sure. I know all the main characters are in the script. So that's sort of my understanding where it goes. I'm not 100% sure though, but I think that's the case. Okay, just, yeah, there we go. Hi, how are you? Just speak a little louder because I can't hear you. Um, I was wondering, how long does it take to do an episode? Okay, I can't hear you. Okay. How long does it take to do an episode? How long does it take to film an episode? Uh, it depends on the episode. Some episodes that have a lot of action in them, uh, it could take up to you know, eight, nine days. We take the weekends off. Most episodes take um, seven days, six, seven days. But if they're the big, like if it's a really big one, it might take ten days. They'll do a second unit if it's got a lot of. Usually, if it's got a lot of action, if there's a lot of talking, like if it's David Hewlett episode, <laughs> and a lot of talking, it could take three days. No. <laughs> 
No, it's more like seven days. But if it, be, but if it becomes an episode where there's lots of action, you know, like a heavy Ronin episode. I think the longest one was the one Robert Cooper did with Jason. I think it's called Satita, right? That took a long time because there's so much action in it. And action takes a long time because of safety purposes and, and locations and things like that. So that's sort of roughly the estimate of the episodes. Cool. David Hewlett, and you worked with him on A Dog's Breakfast. How was that, and would you work with him again in the future? So the question was, did I uh, work with David Hewlett on A Dog's Breakfast? Has anybody seen that? Yeah. Whoa. I don't make a very good-looking woman, I gotta tell you that. Uh, how was it working with David Hewlett? It was great. David wrote, directed, produced, and starred in the movie. You know, it was very difficult, and... Um, it was a long shoot, like a 20 day shoot and in Vancouver, pouring rain the whole entire time. Um, but, you know, it was a fun movie to be part of. Uh, certainly, if I had a chance to work with them again or something like that, there is a rumor of it maybe being a sequel to it. We'll see what happens. Uh, that'd be great. Uh, he's not a very good kisser, I'll tell you that right now. That's a whole other story, though, isn't it? Uh, okay, thank you. Yeah, one down there? Uh, you got you guys sorry you gotta speak up. I can't hear you at all. Uh, when Jason got he asked asked to ask you to do uh, um, to do an impression of Joe. Oh an impression of Joe, yeah you gotta speak really loud because I can't hear you. It's uh, the noise from around there. Uh, an impression of Joe, let me see if I can do that. Oh yeah, I understand um <laughs> He's sitting right over there by the way. <laughs> Signing. But I also do this anyway. I remember when Joe didn't make the plane, we were supposed to be at Dragon Con uh, in September, and Joe didn't make the flight, and for whatever reason, and I said it because he had too much hair product in his hair. <laughs> and so Joe got on the plane and said, I understand my hair is kind of messed up a little bit. That's understandable. Paul, is your character Scottish on the show? I'm like, yeah. And he goes, all right, cool. <laughs> That's my Joe Flanagan. <laughs> Ah, uh, you got another one? Right here. Hello, Paul. Uh, can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Okay, cool. Um, my question is, the episode Sunday, where they actually killed you off, what did you feel about the death scene? Did you like it? Did you think that they did it well, at least? Two words. She asked me, the question was, on the episode Sunday, when they killed off the character, she asked, what did I think of the death scene? And did I like it that I thought it was done tastefully? And I have two words for that. Exploding tumor. <laughs> uh, I thought it was, a, you know what, I'll say, I thought it was a nice episode as far as, you know, I thought it was shocking. And I mean, certainly when I read it, I was, you know, shocked as well. But I thought they executed it fairly well in a sort of a, a nice episode. I'm very happy they came back and did the Kindred part one and two. I thought that was more of a... I think the, a lot of the fans were kind of like, whoa, you know, what happened there with that? So it was kind of cool that they brought the character back and did that. That was kind of a nice thing, you know, that sort of thing. But, uh, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of a tough one. You know, the crew is very much walking on eggshells when we're doing it, you know, because they're all... But, uh, you know, it's television. been a great part uh, for me to do. And obviously coming back was really fun as well. So it was, uh, you know, kind of mixed feelings about it, to be honest. Great. Hi. Hello. <laughs> um, my question is, um, obviously on the show, your accent is a lot deeper, like with the Scottish part. Um, is that normal at any point, or is it just how you're talking now normal? No, no, I was born in Scotland, and I don't normally have a Scottish accent, but I, when I was young, I came over. Actually, my mom, I'm one of seven kids, and my mom was pregnant with me, and we're on our way to Australia. Uh, on the boat from Scotland and I she couldn't go because she wasn't feeling like she wasn't sick So then they postponed the trip for a couple of years and, and moved to Canada instead So I was almost an Aussie <laughs> um, But no my accent my parents have very thick Scottish accents, you know, and uh, I often tell the story. I don't know if I told it to you guys, but I'll tell you when I first uh, <clears throat> Got the part on Stargate. I phoned up my dad and my, my dad, my, my parents, I'm, I'm number six out of seven, so my parents, my dad's almost 80, you know? My mom's 75, she'd hate that I said her age. 
um, sweet, sweet lady. They both don't think they have accents, you know? My mom's like, I don't have a Scottish accent. I'm like, okay. Sure you don't. So then they called me up, I call up, and I was kind of excited about getting a part because I'm playing a Scottish character. They wanted the character to be English initially, and I said, um, he just feels Scottish to me, like, you, you know, comedic timing, and I do the Scottish accent, and they're like, really? And I said, yeah, yeah I'm gonna do it. And the, the casting director didn't want me to do it, and then anyway, I ended up getting the part. And I call up my, my mom and dad, and as far as the acting goes, my dad's kind of like, what the hell you do with the acting, for God's sake? Because I have a teaching degree. You're a teacher, teach, you know, no bloody acting for the God's sake. What kind of game are you playing? And then I got a couple parts and they asked, how much money do you make doing that? And I told him, he goes, that's, fuck, that's bloody fantastic, the acting. <laughs> You're an actor, that's great stuff, man. Any gigs? So, you know, tune changed. So then I call him up and I answer the phone and he answers the phone. He's like, his name's Mike, my mom's name is Jen. He goes, hello. I said, hey, dad, it's Paul. Janet, it's Paul on the phone. How you doing, man? I said, great, dad. I'm not bad. He goes, what's going on? You get any gigs? I said, yeah, actually, no, I just got a part playing a, a Scottish character. Playing a Scottish character? Janet Paul got a part playing a Scottish character. Fantastic, man. What is it? I said, I'm playing a doctor. A Scottish doctor? Oh, bloody great. <laughs> Janet, we've got a doctor in the house. So, you know, what, what is it? I said, it's a new show. It's called, it's called Stargate. What? Stargate. What? I said, Stargate. Star Trek? I said, no, Stargate. <laughs> Star Trek? I said, no, Stargate. It's not bloody Stargate, it's Star Trek. I've been watching it for years, man. <laughs> I said, no, Dad, it's, it's Stargate. I'm the one doing it. I said, no, goes, don't raise your voice, you old man, hot shot. <laughs> Here's your mom, Janet, Paul's on the Star Trek. <laughs> she comes on the phone. Are you in the Star Trek? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I am. That's my parents right there in a nutshell. I actually watched an episode with them. They came in, we had a video, you know, they live in a farm, they don't have cable, so I got an episode and I'm watching it and it's a scene with David and Joe and myself. And my dad's going, is that you there? I said, no, that's Joe, he's the other guy. I'm the one with the Scottish accent. Is that you? I said, no, that's David, I'm the other guy. Oh, fair enough, fair enough, very nice. Great. Okay, who's next? Hi. Oh, well, you got a question here. Where? Hi. 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 Jason said yesterday that you were a good wrestler. So do you think you'll get in the ring with Jason? <laughs> Jason said I was a good wrestler. I wrestled all through university and high school. I'm a different weight class than Jason, though, so I, didn't want, I wouldn't want to hurt him. <laughs> <laughs> That's like wrestling with a giant. I called Jason, do you know what, you know Marmaduke? I called Jason a cross between Marmaduke and Chewbacca. <laughs> Giant. Um, no, I'll let Joe wrestle, that'd be better to watch. And Sir Laura back. Who do we have here? Uh, then, yes. Hi. Just stand up so I know where you are. I don't want to go on about the accent too much, but you're, you're very good at doing this Scottish accent. Can you do any Australian accent, any words that you can... Well, I thought I could until yesterday somebody told me I couldn't. <laughs> I asked you to practice. I'm trying. And then I'm on spot here. I'm going to be honest with you, this convention is doing absolutely everything for me. <laughs> Alright, whatever. <laughs> so no, I can't do an Australian accent. <laughs> if I practice, I can do it, I think. You sound much better than I do. Go ahead. I have two questions. Um, first of all, is there any chance we're going to see you? Just, just any... yell into it. I have two questions. Um, first of all, is there any chance we're going to see you in Stargate Universe? Okay, what's the second one? <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you tell us what you're doing now, what kind of TV show you're doing now? Okay, great. Absolutely. Okay, Star... <laughs> Absolutely nothing is that. Stargate Universe. Um, don't know. I mean, they just finished doing season one, and I think what normally happens, they try to keep it all within that cast, you know, in season one, to establish a new cast. They might possibly bring characters over, you never know, uh, in the second season. I have not heard that's the case. Uh, I know Robert Carlyle's on the show. He's Scottish. Beckett was Scottish. I don't know. Who knows? It would be nice, uh, but I, I, I really don't know. Second question, 
Um, I just finished doing a, a movie with Val Kilmer, like just like last week, a horror movie called Nobody. Um, I'm last to die. Uh, everybody dies except for one person. Um, and I just did, uh, I'm reoccurring on Sanctuary. You know the show Sanctuary? So I'm in the last two episodes of that this season. And I'm not a very nice guy, but it's kind of an interesting part. And I have a lot of scenes with Amanda Tapping, so you look forward to that. And then um, just to have various other movies, and I just did an episode of Supernatural. You know that show? Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, just, you know, auditioning for stuff, actively auditioning, and uh, being quite busy, so it's been good. Hi, is somebody else over there? Hi, I have a question for you. What was the character on Sanctuary? Where, where are you? I just stand up, stand up. What okay. do you on Sanctuary? What, what do you, what's your character like? What do I do for Sanctuary? Yeah, well, what is your character that you're playing? Who, who is that over there? I know it's somebody I know. Is that Momoa? I heard it. I heard it's a green game of unit. It's either, it's either Flanagan or Momoa, you know it. What's your favorite color? <laughs> my, my, my name is you. You're my favorite color. I don't have sandals on. minutes. I like blue. I'm a lizard. I'm a lizard character. All right, who do we got next? Um, uh, uh, we had a blink and you miss it cameo in the recent Star Trek movie. Security. <laughs> Which was fantastic. Um, are you looking to expand that when the sequel comes out? What's up, a model? No, oh, I, um, yeah, just talking about the Star Trek movie, you know, I, I was, I, I read for Scotty in the initial rounds going into it, and uh, I think there was, um, you know, a lot of the Stargate fans were great enough to kind of send in and say things, and then uh, James Doohan's family kind of endorsed me to play the role, which was very nice, I've never met them. Um, and unfortunately it went a different way for me, but, you know, Simon Pegg's playing a great actor. Uh, then they just uh, offered me a little part. And I remember I was driving back to Vancouver, going to do a play, and uh, I got a, fall, a phone call from my manager and said, listen, J.J. Abrams' office called and would love you to do something in the Star Trek movie. I'm like, really? He's like, yeah. I said, what is it? He said, well, they won't tell you unless you say yes. I'm like, yes. <laughs> so it ended up being that little part with uh, Kirk and stuff. I mean, I have no idea where that could go from there, but uh, certainly really nice to be part of it. And uh, I, I tell you what a class act J.J. Abrams is. And uh, Chris Pine was a real, real great kid. And I think he did a great job in the movie. So it was really cool to be part of it. Obviously, I'd love to be part of it again in some capacity, but you know, that remains to be seen. So we'll see what happens. Hi, Hi. Um, I was wondering if the nickname Dr. Fed, like uh, whatever it was possible to call Chewie by Don Shepard. I'm sorry, I cannot hear you, sorry. I was wondering if there was nickname characters called each other, like uh, Jason Momoa's character Roy's called Chewie, that I was wondering if there were nicknames for the other actors, or the other characters. Oh, a nickname for my character? Yeah. Um, you know. Is there a name? Uh, you know, uh, like the puppy dog? <laughs> you know, I'm not really, no, no, the night between the two, you know, uh, you know, back, I don't know, some people might have one, I don't really have one myself, you know, I get a lot of turtles, you know, people send me turtles, wee baby turtles, uh, things like that, you know, uh, you know, all the, all the safe cars in the back, you know, they all say, um, uh, like, the character, I think it's, when they killed Beckett off, it was like, you know, it was like, beating up a puppy or something, you know, because it's such a sweet character, you know, that they gave me to play. And so when you get to do something like that, you know, I think a lot of times people call him like sort of the heart uh, of the show to a certain degree because he's, uh, I think he's, he can be really funny yet very sensitive at the same time because he's, uh, wears his heart on his sleeve like a lot of the Scots do, you know? Thank you. Right? What do we got? Over here. Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, you're my favorite character. Thank you. I'm his favorite character. I'm all <laughs> My last name is Fraser. Scotland. 
Thanks. Um, yeah, what kind of medical training? What kind of medical training do I have? Security. <laughs> Uh, I don't have any medical training. Well, I, you know, I, 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 a little, well, no, no medical training. I have a science background at university, biology and science. I have a minor in, but I have a brother that's a doctor, and he can do a good Scottish accent. So when I don't understand anything that's in the script, but they give me these big words, I call him up. His name's Mike. I say, Mike, what does this mean? And can you say it with a Scottish accent? And he usually tells me. But we have a, a med tech that's on the set with us whenever I have to operate or anything like that, and they kind of stand by you and. In between, like when you rehearse the scene, they go by and rehearse the medical procedure with you that you're doing, you know. It's not like ER or something like that, so he doesn't have to be perfect, but you like to have a bit of an understanding of what you're doing, and I'm not really performing surgery. Although I would have liked to perform surgery on David a few times. It would have been good. But yeah, like no medical training per se, you know. I'm, I'm more or less hopefully acting, like I do. <laughs> Thanks for the question and nice comment. Hi there. Hi. One actor that I could work with, who would it be? Um, you know, I think you know, as uh, you know, as, for uh, well, you know, be nice to be in uh, like work with Glenn Close. I think she's amazing. Meryl Streep, as far as a woman goes, you know what I mean. And then just as far as a talented actress goes, uh, in that sense, uh, I mean, so many actors I like. I like doing comedy and drama. You know, I think Tim Roth's a fantastic actor. I like, uh, you know, uh, John Turturro, you know, those types. I like, I like kind of character actors that have, like, long careers. I've been fortunate to work with Sally Field before. She's a lovely lady, you know, that type of thing. Just really good, uh, really solid actors to be able to share a scene with, which was nice, you know. So, um, anybody like that. But at the end of the day, you know, ultimately acting is like an essence in your room. People all say, well, is it different in Los Angeles acting than in Vancouver? I'm like, at the end of the day, you're in a room with somebody else face to face. It doesn't matter where you are. You're just hopefully just being honest and trying to, you know, be a good actor. You know what I mean? And a good a good actor is a good listener too. So hopefully you can be that. So there's a lot of people I admire out there. There's a lot of great actors out there that I'd love to work with. Thank you. What do we got down here? Hi, my name's Hannah, and um, I absolutely love acting. I was just wondering if you could give me some tips on how to keep focused and stuff like that. Well, come on up here. We'll work on a Scottish accent. <laughs> She's coming. Jesus. <laughs> Go for her so you don't hurt yourself. Make the steps on this side. Well, she's got one part down. She's not shy. What's your name, Tara? Hannah. Hi. Well, you get, okay. Yeah, you got a mic there for her? Let's give her, give her another mic. Get her going here. Can you do a Scottish accent? My dad can. Your dad? Where's your dad? He's over there? Okay, but he's probably taught you a little bit, right? Let's try, let's try something. Try this. It's a bro brick, we like to connect it if you can. It's a bro brick. <laughs> Moonlike. Moonlike. Nick to Nick. Nick to Nick. Yurek Yurek <laughs> that was sort of the Russian Scottish. <laughs> Very good. So you want to be an actress. How old are you now? 19. 19. Okay. All I can tell you for acting, honestly, if you love it, do it. But you really, really have to love it because it's one of the hardest things to do. And unfortunately, especially for women, because If you're, you know, if you're a young girl and you're 19 in age group you are, you got till about 25 or so, and then all of a sudden you have to be a character actress, you know? Well, it's not really fair, but with men, you, 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 if you watch television, you just see that 70% of the roles are male roles. So, but do theater, do all the independent movies you can do, do all the independent plays you can do, do anything you can do, just do as much as you can. And don't do it because you want to make money or be famous, do it because you love it. That's my, my advice to you. Wouldn't she be great? Sweetheart, good luck with it. All right, thanks for coming out. Hi, okay, what do we got? Down there, hello. Hi, hi, Cole, I love you. <laughs> I love you too. Aren't you cheeky? I'm just wondering. I love Melbourne. <laughs> I was wondering on Stargate Atlanta, 
characters besides yourself, who's your favorite character? <laughs> I never said I was my favorite character. Um, you know, I think all the characters are so unique. You know, I think I, we were really lucky because, you know, Joe plays his role, you know, he's like, I'm gonna go out and kill someone. I'm just gonna go out and just, uh, I'm really good looking, I'm gonna shoot somebody. Um, and then Jason's like, I'm gonna eat somebody. I'm gonna crush somebody. So I'd like to be maybe a combination of Jason and Joe a little bit. Um, David Hewlett, I'm not sure because I might find myself really annoying. Um, Rachel's really, really cute and good looking, so that's it, you know. Uh, that would be weird. Uh, but I, I think the characters are all really well developed. I don't really have a favorite, I just think the combination of them all work really well together. You know, and I think that's what makes the show work. You know, but uh, it would be good to be able to do some of the stuff JC gets to do. Like, you know, he gets to do a lot of action stuff, that kind of thing. It's kind of cool. I always wanted to do a headbutt. I thought it'd be great if Beckett headbutted somebody, but I never got to. I told James Bamford, I go, just let Beckett give someone a glass of Egypt kiss once. Never happened though. Maybe in the movie, we'll see. Great, thank you. Hi. Hi there. There's a lot of really great TV and film in particular coming out of the UK and the Republic of Ireland. I'm wondering if that scenario is in my opinion that they're working with in the future. She said there's a lot of really good film and TV in, and coming out of the UK right now, and that's an area that I might be interested in working. Uh, I was born there, so I can't work there, and I recently just got an agent there. But you almost have to be there unless they give you a direct offer. But obviously, yes, I'd be interested in doing something there. You know, it'd be great. I, I love, I love a lot of the British television, and like I love like the British Office and and shows like that. I love the comedies, and I love a lot of the dramas that they come out with as well. So, absolutely. And if you could tell tell someone to hire me, that would be great. I appreciate that. Thank you. Hi. We got someone. Hi. I was wondering, I watched the dogs right this week, and I was wondering what the fuck was happening. You mean the one I'm going to therapy for? <laughs> so you just asked what the weirdest scene was, sort of? Is that what you're asking? I kind of couldn't hear you. Hear you. Tell me what was more challenging, dressing as a woman or that scene with David Miller? Uh, the scene with David Hewlett. Um, I'll tell you. I'll tell you a funny story. We were. It was pouring rain. I think we we're like maybe halfway through the shoot, ten days, and uh, David is lying on the mud, naked, with soap suds all over his butt, and I'm standing above him, dressed as a woman, in a bad dress, and I have my heels on, and all of a sudden they're going to shoot the scene. I'm looking down at him as Detective Morris. And the camera guy goes, oh, we're sorry, we got to change the battery on the camera. You guys can't move because David can't get up because he's naked, lying, stomach down in the mud. Horrible sight. Um, and then I, I'm basically standing above him and they have his mark. I'm like, okay, great. And so it's pouring rain. I have an umbrella. I'm holding it over David. And it's taking a while for them to go get the battery. And I, he looks up at me and I look down at him. I'm like... Can I ask you something? He's like, yes, McGillian. I said, this better be goddamn funny. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> and then as I was saying that, my heels started sinking into the mud. <laughs> I'm like, great. So yes, that was challenging. Creepy, too. Yes, sir. Yeah, I don't know. The, the, well, see, the question was, Carson Beckett, uh, not a super Scottish name, Beckett being more English is what you're saying, McKay being more Scottish. Uh, the name wrote Beckett, he wasn't Scottish. I think they wanted me to play him English and I played him Scottish. Um, and McKay, I have no idea. David was actually the last person cast on the show. Um, and I remember going to the, the read-through and we're sitting around a table, and it was very exciting, you know, for the pilot. And everybody from MGM was there, and all these people were there. We're sitting around, and, and Rainbow was in the show at the time, and Rachel and Joe was there, and Robert Patrick, and we're all talking, and, and basically, they said, um, okay, we're gonna talk, I'm meeting Joe and everything, and Beckett has some of the first lines of the, of the pilot, right? And no one, knew, no, no, no one knew I was doing a Scottish accent. I just don't normally talk like that, so 
when I sat down and started reading the script, um, I had the first line, I'm like, to Rodney, I think, I'm, I'm not bloody getting in that chair for God's sake, so I'm not doing it, and all of a sudden I just feel Joe lean over and go, <laughs> all right, all right, Scottish. <laughs> and then, you know, ever, a couple of people were looking at me, and that was kind of, I think it kind of threw everybody a little bit, you know, so it's, it's kind of fun in that sense, but I have no idea what the thinking behind that was, you know, but I'm glad it worked out that way. Hi. I hear you have a really great story about Joe and the Rocks. Can you tell us that story? All right. Uh, Joe Flanagan, you know, people always ask, what's up? Something that's kind of fun behind the scenes thing. Well, it wasn't really fun for me, but uh, we, we were packed. Uh, I had the packs on. It's when we go off world. I forget the name of the episode. But David and I, and David sort of notorious for being like, I don't want to do this. You know, but we had a stretcher that David and I had to carry, and then I think Jason had somebody on his back or something, and then Joe had a stretcher with somebody else, and they're injured soldiers, and Joe purposely got the biggest guy as the background perform performer to be on our stretcher. And so once you shoot it, you have to do it all day, you have the same continuity going on, right? And the handles on it were really thick, made of wood. So David and I are picking up this really big guy, pouring sweat, and then throughout the day, whenever I take in between scenes, I take my backpack off, Joe would put rocks in it. <laughs> and so by the end of the day, I'm almost like, and he kept on saying to me, oh, you look tired, buddy, you sweat a lot. I'm like, yeah, it's hot. That's why I carry the big guy. Yeah, you're really sweating up a storm, buddy. And then he left, and he told the AD when I left, just tell Paul he looked in his backpack. And I opened up my backpack and I have like these big boulders in it that he'd been sticking in there. I still have not got him back. But maybe I'm gonna get Jason to wrestle him in the ring. That would get him back. That'd be good. Here we go. Hi. What, you got one here? Okay, here we go. Um, you've worked on Sanctuary, which is a predominantly green screen shot show. How's that compared to working on a set like Atlantis? Uh, this, a sanctuary is primarily a green screen show, and what's that different? How's that different from Atlantis, right? Yeah, so uh, Atlantis, we use some green screen. Sanctuary, you could be actually on stage similar like this, and they will, you know, Martin Wood would say, okay, there's a big, huge dresser there that you have to imagine, a uh, huge desk, there's a screen here with like fish going everywhere, and you just sort of have to imagine it. So basically, it's like you're walking onto a set, there's a huge green, like that, but just blank behind you, and then you're acting with somebody else. I mean, there is chairs and stuff to sit on if it's appropriate for the scene. It's a little bit odd at first, because you're sort of like, okay, I guess we're just doing this here. And then when you see it, it's amazing how the computer-generated images come in all around. So it's kind of different at first, but thankfully with Atlantis, I was used to it a little bit, you know, so I had a, an understanding, because oftentimes in Atlantis, they'll be like, uh, especially the first season, they'll be like, okay, there's a huge explosion outside of the polo jumper. And we'd all be like, how big is the explosion? And some people would be like going, and then some people would be going like, whoa, you know? So you have to kind of get everybody on the same page so they know what to react to. So it's just a matter of everybody being, knowing how big the thing is, and how big the animal is. In, in, in Sanctuary, there's a giant um, sea creature. And I'm like, well, how big is it, right? Like, how big? And they're like, I go, would it be as big as the roof? They're like, yeah, it's that big. So it's enormous, right? So when you're looking at it, you're like, whoa. Because the camera can pick up everything in your eyes. So you can't be, you know, like, that's a pretty big sea creature. you got to be kind of freaked out by it, right? And, if, you know, so that type of thing you get used to. But it's just a matter of making sure that everybody does the same thing. Or else you can look really, really silly. Hello. Hello, Paul. Hello. Um, you love your character. Thank you. How does um, Dr. Beckett get on with Dr. Weir? Dr. Beckett gets great, gets along great with Dr. Weir. I think they had a great relationship. You know, Tori Higginson is such a lovely actress, and uh, she she had a real connection. Very tricky role for her, you know, because it's uh, um, tough in a sense of that, like being the woman in charge, you know. And and I think she handled the the, the balance of it very well. I, I think those characters had a, had a really nice bond, you know. I remember watching Sunday and watching her that moment at the end when Carson passed away. She had a speech. It was very lovely. But I love working with, with Tori. As, as, a, as an actor and as, you know, uh, a character on the show, it was a lot of fun. It was really great. Hi, 
Hi. I have two questions. Two questions. Yeah. Um, firstly, did you get like buy that shirt, your, your same pass and Beckett shirt yourself? No. <laughs> <laughs> and also, um, to how similar are you to Carson? Pardon me? How similar are you to the character Carson? Okay. The first thing is that I buy this shirt. No, some fans from Save Carson Beckett sent me this and sent me some mugs with the same thing, which I still have. And I sent one to my mom, and she thought that was really cute. And uh, a few other things. Lots of, uh, an odd thing, a couple. I think there was a bra with Sam Carson Beckett on it, and something else, and some underwear. Um, I'm wearing those. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Cheeky bugger. Uh, how similar, and you know, I think, Every character is a little bit similar to their own, to their, you know, every, I think every role as an actor is an extension of yourself to a certain degree, you know? I think there's aspects of Carson I'm very much like and aspects that I'm not, you know? But I think you're trying to bring, I do anyway, a little bit of my personality to everything I play a little bit, which makes it your own, you own it a little bit, you know? I think I'm not as, as much of a security cat as Carson is, you know? Uh, and then again, you know, uh, the character has a lot of humor as well, and I like to think that like I kind of live my life like that. I have a good time. I, I enjoy my life. I have a lot of great friends, and I think Carson's a very, uh, hopefully, a very likable character, you know. And uh, I think you try to bring. I think all of us bring a little bit of it. I think David Hewlett is the most like his character, though, <laughs> and Jason a little bit too. Hey, the most embarrassing thing I've done as an actor, and then worst and best thing, I'm a, okay, I don't know. I'm, that's a tough one. Well, I have one word for that duet. <laughs> when David Hewlett kissed me, because I didn't kiss him, we clear that up. That was pretty embarrassing. Uh, I remember Martin Giro came up, he said, listen, I've um, uh, got a script coming up, and it could be the first guy on guy kiss in sci-fi. I'm like, really? He goes, it's you and David. I'm like, really? really? It's really funny. It's a girl's locked inside of David's body. She's got a crush on you. And so, you know, she kisses you because she might die. And I'm like, oh, okay. I go, how's uh, David with that? He goes, he goes, David's totally cool with it because it's you. And then he goes to David's trailer, tells David the same thing. He's like, oh, how tall with that? He's like, well, Paul, you know, he's okay with it because it's you. He's like, really? He's like, yeah, okay. All right, I guess I'll do it then. So that's how we ended up doing it. But the crew, who are all these big, burly guys, you know, electricians and the grip and stuff, are walking by the whole day. Little makeup session going on later today, fellas? So we got bugged a lot. And David surprised me because in the first rehearsal, he just grabbed me. And, you know, normally in the rehearsal, you don't go, go as much at it. And he just grabbed me and really planted one on me. And uh, I gotta tell you, I've been in love with him ever since. <laughs> that felt good just to say that. No, <laughs> no um, yeah, like I often say, lips like sandpaper. <laughs> okay, what do we got here? Hi. Um, Joe mentioned yesterday that one thing David really would have loved to do is Stargate on ice. I was wondering if you had any interest in doing that at all. David, Joe said David would like to do Stargate on ice. Yeah, I would love to see Joe, Jason Momoa out there on ice. That would be hilarious. But I think he can skate. I'm not sure though. Yeah, I think he can. Uh, Joe can skate, I think. Oh, here you go. Hey, hey. Oh, hi. Stargate on ice is my idea. My idea. <laughs> Stargate on Ice Tour. Um, I don't know, that would be a tough one. Uh, I would like to see David on that ice too, that would be very funny. Okay, what do we got? Hi, I was just wondering Hello. if you had any particular role with a uh, that you really want to do, like Shakespeare or any sort of character that you really ultimately want to play, you know, anyone? Uh, any role that I'd really like to play, you know, from something from um, Shakespeare to that. I, I think. Uh, Bond, double O Bond, you know, double O Bond would be fun. Uh, I don't know if that'll ever happen because he's so Daniel Craig so good, but uh, that kind of thing would be a fun character to play. 
there's lots of rules out there that are, you know, are written already and lots that aren't written that I'd love to play. I just like good writing. You know, if it's good writing, I'd love to play it. You know, and then be it comedy or drama, drama doesn't matter. Cool, what do you got? Okay, there. You said you actually like to have fun with life. What do you do for fun? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. You said you actually like to have fun in life. What do you actually do for fun? Uh, I like to have fun and laugh. You know, I think just the same as everybody else, you know? I mean, I go to <laughs> lots of movies and go with my friends, dinners, you know, that type of thing, and just, live, you know, live a life. I play I play a lot of uh, tennis. I'm a, a hacky golfer, you know, that type of thing. Uh, just that, just regular stuff, like just totally regular stuff. Going out for the, I love going out for dinners and stuff like that. I try different restaurants. I really like doing that, that type of thing. And movies, of course. I love going to movies and plays and stuff. I really enjoy that, too. Just regular stuff. Here we go. Hi. Hello. Thank you. You said welcome. Oh, with my kilt. Oh, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put, a, put a kilt on for a photo op. Just a black short one. Not that short. Star-crossed. Huh? Star-crossed. What about star-crossed? I saw a website that said that they were talking about maybe they'd written some scripts for it, but it was not. Uh, yeah, I don't know what David's idea is with it. I mean, I know that he's got something in the works. We're doing Star Cross. Star Cross, for the, the people that don't know, is a, a character's a show inside of the Dog's Breakfast that the actor I played was one of the stars of. And it's kind of fun. It's really fun to do. Um, I hope it, you know, comes to fruition for him because I've worked hard on it. Um, it's, a, it's a really funny idea, concept. I don't know what his plans are and who's going to be in it and that type of thing, you know, but it would be, it sure be a lot of fun to do if it, it worked out. It's a really funny character. Great. What do we got here? Yes? That's it? Oh, right here. If you were given the opportunity out of uh, the main female characters, which one would you have preferred to get it off with? The question was, Given the opportunity of all the female main characters, which one would I get it on with? Well, there's only two there. <laughs> well, you know what, the, pro the question is, would they like to get it on with me? <laughs> uh, no, they're, all, they're, they're like, it's like, it's like family, you know what I mean? So that'd be just kind of weird. Uh, they're both great women. Uh, you know, again, Amanda Tappy came on the show with Jules Stane, who's a good friend of mine. They're all, they're all great characters. Yeah, pardon me? The only one I got around with was David. <laughs> and I didn't like that at all, so I don't know how it's going to be any better. That was it. <laughs> Alright, I think we have time for another couple of questions. Okay. Um, with Starcross, did they use any type of sets that um, had already been used in Stargate Atlantis? Uh, yeah, in Starcross they used the, uh, the Daedalus set a lot. That's we shot in the Daedalus set for that show. So that was kind of neat. It was on a weekend and we went in and used it. Maybe a little it. pieces of it, you know? That, kind of yeah. thing. that was, that was handy. Question. It's hard to find spaceships these days. Hi. Hi. Um, I was just wondering, there's a lot of um, sort of comic book movies coming out at the moment. Which is your favorite comic book superhero and would you like to play him in a movie or her? I'm getting uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, a lot of comic books, super I mean, geez, I don't know. I also thought when I was a kid, I also wanted to be the Mighty Thor. You know, yes! that one? And I've never, you know, I don't know if that's coming out or not, but uh, uh, yeah, I really like the comic book movies that are coming out. I'm excited to see, we talked about, uh, you know, um, you know, I like, I like the Spider-Mans initially, and then, you know, I think the Green Lantern's coming out soon. That'll be cool to see. I love watching, I love the Wolverine, you know, and Hugh Jackman, great Australian actor, right? Um, so you know, that would be a lot of fun to be in something like that, obviously, something big like that. They, they have a tendency to shoot a lot of them up in Vancouver, so you never know what will happen. It would be kind of cool to be in something like that um, at some point in time. Yep. What do we have? Anybody? Um, what kind of stuff did you guys get up to on set between scenes? Did you get up to 
Yeah, we ignore each other. <laughs> no, I mean, usually, honestly, between scenes, especially for David's character and my character, I have so much dialogue, I'm running my lines for the next scene that we're doing. And I would just go over my lines over and over again and read it with the other actor, usually. Or, you know, Jason would be practicing gu guitar, and we shared a trailer. So I'd be sitting reading my lines, and then he'd walk in and be like, you know, on the other side. And he'd have a guitar, and you know, it was, we were in the same trailer, but he had one half about this big, and I had the other half about that big. And he'd be over there screaming and playing, you know, loud music. And I'd be um, working on my lines or whatever I had to do. So a lot of times like that, you just kind of um, read the script for the following week, and memorize the lines for the day or the day after, you know, when you have scenes. So it's a lot of that going on in between, you know, kind of preparing for the next scene, you know? Because you don't, in television, you don't have a lot of time. It's like, you gotta get through it and move on, you know? And especially with these guys that we're working with, like Jason and Joe and stuff, I could have a long monologue talking about some, someone's dying on a table, and they're like, you know, playing their guitars and laughing, and you know, and I'm trying to do this monologue, and like, whatever, Paulie, you know, they kinda just move on from there. So you gotta be kind of on your game and be ready to move on, you know, to the next scene. And uh, so a lot of that while you're on set, I, I find you keep pretty productive. But if you have time off, you know, we, you see, we have a TV and video where you watch movies or whatever you want to do, you know, eat, <laughs> you know. That, a lot of good craft service, very, very tasty. Right. Yes, hi. Just stand up and scream it. Oh yeah. Yeah, actors like Virginia Anderson do a lot of improv with their lines. I was just wondering how hard it is to act against someone when you've learned all this stuff and then they change it up on you all the time. It's easy. <laughs> it's fine. Um, and, you know, like that. You know, you know, the thing with my character too, because you're Scottish, I could add a lot of little things here and there, Scottishisms to it, because the writers aren't Scottish, and I'd say, well, he wouldn't really say that. He'd say it like this, and they're like, okay, and they start trusting you after a while with that. But Richard, he. Would, um, RDA they call him, when he would add things in here and there, but you know, it always made the same sort of, it, it, it still made sense towards the scene, so it wasn't completely different, but it was close, you know? So I think you just gotta be a really good listener and just try to, you know, riff with them a little bit when you're doing things like that. Um, uh, which I'm fine with, you know, and I think a lot of actors are, some are, some are. Yeah, in the back. Okay, hi. Yes, I'm uh, I directly produced, I have directed some shorts, I've directed theater, and I've produced uh, a few movies. Uh, one called Sea Ridge Fly, which is a very dramatic film about schizophrenia. I co-produced that with uh, Gina Shirelli and Pete McCormick. Um, a great experience. I'm producing a short that I'm shooting November 24th in Vancouver about uh, a really interesting script called A Fine Young Man about uh, sort of a Cold War conflict between Russia, US, sort of, and a very quirky way of storytelling, very interesting doing that. And then another movie called The Bad, which I'm co-producing with some other people that will hopefully shoot the screen. So yeah, I like doing that. But I'll act in those too. So, I still like acting the most. Hugo, how are you? Hi. <laughs> Thanks for a good dinner last night. Thank you, welcome, thank you. Yeah. Um, did you enjoy or did you feel comfortable how your character progressed over the years and how it ended up being? No, I love I the way my character progressed because initially Beckett was very like a comedic fodder, I think, a lot of ways, you know, kind of a smaller character, they didn't know what was going to happen with him. And then he kind of grew as the episode progressed and became more an uh, integral part of the main cast. So I was very happy with the way it went. The only thing that never happened to him, I thought he was, there was an episode I was hoping for where he was going to be trapped on an island with Swedish models, and that just didn't happen. So that, that, that didn't come out, so I mean, if that would have worked out, that would be great. But uh, you know, it was, it was a great, great progression. I mean, besides the exploding tumor, everything was working out nicely. Um, and then he came back again, which was nice too. So I think 
he got to do a lot of things within the realm of the five years. I think the character is very fully developed. I think the fans got a chance to know him from a dramatic point of view and from a comedic side. I like the relationship that Beckett and McKay have very much. I, thought, like, I love as much fun as we all make fun of each other. I think we had such a great cast, uh, great cast chemistry. Certainly love acting with David a lot. You know, we really had a, a good thing going. And um, that's what made for the, uh, an exciting episode of Stargate, I think. You know, a little bit of comedy, some action, and some drama, you know, thrown in the mix. So I was very happy. It was a great opportunity, great character for me to play. Yeah, we have time for a couple more questions. Um, yesterday, Jason told us about a prank with the dry hopping. I was just wondering if that was a normal once in class, or was just what Jason did next to That's just something Jason does. That wasn't me. And, and, and he didn't do it to me either, which is great. <laughs> Disgusting. Yes, sir. <laughs> Hi. Hey, I, I watched that a question. Uh, do you still keep in touch with the cast to get together at all from time to time? Pardon me? Do you still keep in touch with the rest of the cast or get together at all? Oh yeah, I, 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 I've been in touch with these guys a lot over this past couple of days. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, we keep in touch. I, you know, I saw, I saw, well, right now I'm living in Vancouver and I, I kind of go back and forth between there and Los Angeles. But those guys live down there, Jason and Joe in particular. Um, I, I, we talk on a regular basis. Rachel, I, ta I see, I saw her not too long ago. She's up in Vancouver. Um, Tori I see once in a while, we live in the same area of LA, and David has been over in England for a while, so I haven't seen him, but we talk or email once in a while too, so, I mean, it's really nice when we get together, especially at conventions, we have a chance to see each other, it, this kind of brought us together too, so, it's like, you all see some old friends, and we see some old friends, so it's kind of cool, and I also say that, you know, some people watch rugby, some people watch cricket, some people watch football, and then some people watch sci-fi, you know? And that's what a lot of people come together for, they do this, you know, and it's great to see. I've been all over the world, luckily, and, and saw so many great, great people. I was telling the people last night that it was such a, a nice experience to come here because um, everyone's so laid back and easygoing and having a good time and enjoying themselves. And it's just really great to see, especially, in, you know, the world economic crisis that we're going through and so much bad stuff going on in the world. Everyone's having a great time with these things. A lot of the kids are here, they're having a laugh too. I've never been to a convention with wrestling at it before, so that's kind of cool. Um, so yeah, it's been a really great experience for us to come, and we hook up again and have time with our castmates. And you have a lot of friends that you meet. Sometimes, you know, you meet people that, like I've met many people that said, how'd you meet? And they're married and engaged, and they met it through sci-fi. So that's kind of cool, you know, I like that. Very nice. Rob? Do I have time for one more? One more question, last question. It better be good. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure at all. Um, okay, um, well basically... I'm engaged. <laughs> uh, I'm not. Um, <laughs> but, um, you are a naughty, naughty, naughty lady, aren't you? I try, I really Very do. cheeky. Um, now I've got to pick the question up. I am in a different hemisphere, so things happen. <laughs> I can see how it's no one's like, like Vegas. <laughs> Well, yeah, um, I travel a lot myself, so next time in Vancouver, you've got a number, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> you people from Melbourne are so shy. <laughs> I've been everywhere, though, you know. Um, I bet you have. <laughs> I'm getting a wee bit randy up here. <laughs> and it's only like 11 o'clock in the morning. Thank you very much. I'd like to fly out this evening, but otherwise, it could have been, what could have been is, you know, let's in the imagination. Um, <laughs> I've got to think What's your bloody question, love? <laughs> Cough it up. Um, you talked about plays. I didn't know you did theatre. I've heard other actors in Stargate talk about doing theatre. Um, you do them in Vancouver or LA or anything like that, or any productions? Is it regular or just in between? television and movie talks or what? <laughs> okay, I'll slow down. The theatre productions that you do. Wait a the theatre productions. Oh, the theatre. I, 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 there you go. That theatre, I've done theatre all, all over Canada, mostly, mostly in Canada. Lots of places. Western Canada Theatre Company, 
uh, in Vancouver at various different stages and stuff. And if you find time, I mean, it's been a year since I did a play, but I love doing theater too, so you can just fit it in. Usually it happens sometime around December when it's a little slower in the film industry. And then that type of, if I can do, get one in like that, that's what I do usually, you know? Um, that being said, thank you for the question. Come and see me later, we'll talk about the other stuff. Um, but you guys have been great to me. Thank you very much for having me here. Uh, all of us are going to be here. Later on, we're doing some photo ops and stuff. I'm going to throw on my kilt, so come and say hi. And uh, thanks very much, Australia. You guys are awesome.